Well, I, I, let me just say that, first of all, what is this great reset? Uh, we should, governments and societies, the world should, quotes, seize the opportunity of the public health and economic crisis to reimagine the world and radically change policies. I've therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Which means that we have to take more aggressive measures to contain the spread of the virus, more aggressive social uh, distancing measures. And I regret that. I regret that the, the perception this has created, quite frankly, um, when somebody said, are you sure you should be doing this? This is in public view. My response was yes. Well, as Dr. Hinshaw has said, we are, we are moving from a pandemic to an endemic state of uh, COVID-19. Um, we have seen the numbers come down uh, dramatically in Alberta. We should salute that. You know, uh, I, I think it's time, uh, Frank, let me be blunt. I think it's time for media to stop promoting fear. It's open for good, not just open for summer. Yeah, we will not facilitate or accept vaccine passports. I don't even know what a vaccine passport is. How bad this situation becomes and how long it lasts is now up to each and every one of us. Friction exemption program, a proof of vaccination program for participation in certain discretionary activities. When Jason Kenney won the leadership of the United Conservative Party, he was considered by many to be a salvific figure of sorts. Finally, Albertans would have a leader they could count on. With the onset of COVID restrictions and some questionable adoption of policy, that leadership came into question. And even within the UCP AGM, this party is divided. It remains to be seen what will happen in the coming months, but we will be here to cover it all. If you want to help us cover this story and help us attend events like this in the future, you can always help us by chipping in at realreporters.ca. Adam Sos here for Rebel News, and it is day two of the United Conservative Party AGM here at Grey Eagle Casino in Calgary, Alberta. There will be a number of policies up for debate today, but the real story today lies in Jason Kenney's future in leadership. We're going to be covering the policy decisions, talking to some folks here, hopefully some MLAs as well, and bringing you parts of Jason Kenney's speech. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome Jason Kenney to the podium. Unfortunately, the debate over COVID has been polarizing, probably more so in Alberta than anywhere in Canada. From day one, the Alberta NDP was the only opposition party in the country to see COVID as an opportunity for partisan division rather than social cohesion. We all know that they had, had they been in office over the past 20 months, Alberta would have been in a hard Australian-style lockdown with constant closure of schools, businesses, and places of worship. We're not free. I had to take a test to come in here. A lot of pe other people did. You got to show documentation. Nothing else matters. Strong and free, not weak and scared. Right? That's the motto of conservatives. You got to live by that. You got to stand by that. You can't. Um, you know, you can't, that's not something you can sit on the fence yeah. about, right? So, yeah. So on some of the background things, the policy, the action items, they're, they're doing just fine in your books, but they're missing, they're missing the big key, the big fundamental freedom. Yeah, and you know, it's like, you know, Michael Jordan taking the final shot, he hits it when it matters, or having a great regular season, right? So yes, everything he says, and this is the most supportive group that he has, but out there in, the, in Red Deer, Lethbridge, you know, in the country and everything like that, he doesn't have any support. I mean, he has 39% support among his own voters, and the reason why is because you can't sit on the fence when it comes to something as important as freedom. And so do you think that they have not been following the science and that they are off base on that front? Well, it certainly appears to me that because of the nature of the decisions and the decisions that have been made, that um, they have had extremely negative implications. Uh, we have seen some things happen as a result of our healthcare system that I don't think we had to have. We could have had them avoided if we would have listened to the science from the beginning. Yeah. But, you know, I'm here with a conservative family to talk about how good our future can be, and I think our future can be 
uh, very, very good, but we need to earn the trust of Albertans back and we need to make sure that we have Jason Kenney resign as soon as possible so that we can go through those steps of healing and coming together and unifying. And I'm here to unify Albertans, but I'm here more importantly to unify Conservatives in this province because we need to move forward in the same direction. And what do you think Jason Kenney has to do or maybe he could do differently to keep more people united and, and put an end to some of the divide that we're seeing? Well, uh, Mr. Kenney himself acknowledged that there is always not uh, 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 not an anonymous uh, resolution on any policy even within the caucus. Mm -hmm. uh, so he mentioned that. So, uh, so there is some work to do there and uh, I hope uh, he'll uh, focus on that. Well, I, I think I would always go back to the people who are opposed to Kenny and just simply ask, well, how would you have done it differently? Because no political party, no whether left or right, who's in government right now, has managed to do this properly and have made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, and I think the fact that Kenny today acknowledged that those mistakes were made, that he's trying to do better, and that even as a conservative, uh, he will want to make sure to protect our rights, including our conscience rights, as we talked about, or even something as basic as our, our right to self-determination when it comes to health care. I, I would rather trust him than having an NDP government running our province. But you could see in the room that there is a huge amount of desire for unity. People are behind the message that Jason Kenney has today, which is that we are the province that is leading the country and economic growth, that we are Alberta and we are going to continue to be a province that offers opportunities, entrepreneurialism, and a place for folks who want to go when they want to get ahead, that Alberta advantage, mm -hmm. so that they can leave the next generation better off than they were. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in the end, that's what the election was about when we won in 2019, mm -hmm. and I think that's what it needs to be about in 2023. And if we focus on COVID, I promise you, we'll be split down the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, my constituency down to right here uh, on the edge of Calgary are going to feel very differently on a lot of these issues. Mm -hmm. But if we make this a question about whether or not we can succeed in building pipelines, getting the economy going, getting jobs moving again. About, we had a $7 billion investment in Alberta week this last mm. week, right? Yeah. If that's what the election's about, I think every conservative and a bunch more are going to want to vote for the UCP. But if we let this be about something else, then I think that's going to be a lot more difficult for us. So I'm focusing on the positive message. Yeah. We continue to do the important work of, of examining the possibility of exercising even more powers, like through the creation of an Alberta uh, provincial police force, which I believe would give us amazing advantage of local community policing. And I encourage all of you to look at the model that Minister Madhu has presented, which would have greater integration of social services, of, of alternative drug treatment courts, of, of, of chi child wellness services, of indigenous uh, oversight as well, into police governance. Of a uh, my department um, is beginning a province-wide consultation this November, uh, all the way through to February with municipal uh, leaders, uh, First Nation leaders, mm -hmm. and other law enforcement communities. Uh, based on what we have seen so far, it looks promising, but more than anything else, beyond it being more cost effective, I think the time has come for us to also do everything we can to protect and defend our province, to build mm -hmm. I mean, what I call a modern 21st century community policing mm -hmm. that relies on, on resources and manpower right here, that allows us to build the police academy right here in our province, that assures the young men and women of our, of our province that they can actually attend a, a police academy right here in our province and go back to serve their communities. Mm -hmm. but, but also, the province is responsible for 70% of the police cost. Some municipalities are responsible for 70% or 90%. The federal government is only responsible for 30 or 10%. Mm -hmm. But the federal government have got absolute say in law enforcement, in, in RCMP, in our province, when they only pay 30%. Mm -hmm. Quebec is not dealing with that. Ontario is not dealing with that. The time has come for us to defend and protect our province. Half of the policy sessions have taken place now, so I wanted to bring you some updates about some of the good and some of the bad. One of the really positive motions that was passed and adopted by the party was one concerning censorship by the government, obviously in response to the Liberal government's efforts to censor the internet. So the motion adopted a policy that would be resistant to that. 
the only motion that saw a vote count and that was very hotly contested and saw numerous people taking to microphones in defense and in contradiction to the motion was one over conscience rights for health care workers. This is a fundamentally conservative principle, uh, defending people's fundamental freedoms to not have to work against their conscience or against their uh, personal beliefs. Unfortunately, it came to, uh, down to a very, very close vote. Normally, this would be an issue you would hope that a conservative party would be unified on. Fortunately, however, this motion was passed and adopted by the party. 628 votes cast for the resolution, 371 opposed, 257 motions passed. You forwarded a motion similarly some time ago, and this is uh, the latest iteration of that. Is that not right? Yeah, I, I'm not sure it was that contentious. Of course, there's good debate. That's what these policy conventions are about. Mm -hmm. I think it did come down to a vote, and they count in the end, and it seemed pretty clear to me an overwhelming majority of UCP members who came to the convention feel as though conscience is an important part of who we are as conservatives, an important part of who we are as Canadians. Mm -hmm. uh, so they voted for it overwhelmingly, uh, and I think that's a good stride forward. In fact, I don't think it's that novel a thing to say that you're for conscience rights. I think that's been the case for a very long time in Western democracies. It's an essential part to say that there's something about who you are and the dignity you have as an individual that even the state can't override. That there is a part of who you are that identifies that we do not want as a society the ability to force you to participate in something that goes so far past your your deepest held beliefs. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it was that contentious. I, I think it was good debate uh, and overwhelmingly in support of it. And I think that's a good thing because it says that we as conservatives and we as Canadians and, and Albertans believe in that value of conscience. Well, uh, Premier gave a very good speech the the message is uh, you know to uh, to get to know what's happening in Alberta today the economy is recovering and growing mm -hmm. so that's the important news we know there were uh, some uh, differing voices about uh, COVID management because uh, people in uh, Calgary and uh, Edmonton they wanted more restrictions, and people in rural India, rural uh, Alberta, they, <laughs> so, feels like it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, right. so so they 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 didn't want uh, stringent restrictions. So, but then we we saw what happened, uh, you know. So so, uh, but uh, I, I'm so encouraged because there are so many people showing up here and uh, debating on the policy. It's all about uh, grassroots. Uh, um, reconnection mm -hmm. and they all gathered here in person they were happy and they debated on the policy which is a great thing so I I think uh, there are better days ahead for conservatism in Alberta. Well, policy session number two is in the books. We have gone through 30 motions for policies to be adopted. Again, we're going to run through some of the good and the bad. On the good front, a motion enshrining people's rights to keep working while not necessarily being forced to be parts of unions, a victory for choice. On the other side, something of a more questionable policy. Uh, some, they were calling for teachers, publicly paid teachers, uh, to be subject to performance-based standard, not just standardized uh, payment scheme, so that they would actually be accountable for the work that they were doing. Uh, that motion was unfortunately uh, failed. While we certainly support teachers, uh, the frequent conservative notion is that good teachers should be getting paid even more than they are, and bad teachers who are getting a free ride, maybe not so much. Earlier, there was a successful motion passed that enshrined health care workers' uh, freedom of conscience and freedom not to be forced to engage in any practices that go against their fundamental beliefs. Uh, so that motion was passed successfully. Unfortunately, another motion this afternoon uh, that sought to protect health care pr practitioners from being forced to refer people to those services, that is, the doctors or nurses wouldn't have to do them themselves, but if a patient asked for those services, they'd be forced to refer refer them to a doctor willing to. Uh, so the motion was to prevent that from being forced upon doctors. Unfortunately, that motion failed. So a minor win for conscious health care rights in the morning this afternoon, but the next step, uh, unfortunately, this afternoon 
was not passed. So day two of the UCP AGM is under wraps. Fortunately, we did have some more access to MLAs. We were able to speak to a few and even some ministers. We also heard from Jason Kennedy and we were able to bring you some updates on the policy decisions that were made today. There's also no lack of love from rebel supporters out there. So for all of you who came up and said hello, thank you so much for doing that. As always, I wanna thank you all for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. If you guys want to support us in telling the other side of the story, you can do so by chipping in at realreporters.ca.